Oh hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day so far. So today we're talking makeup I am super glad I passed on. Makeup I chose not to buy for one reason or another and my instincts turned out to be spot on. Now people do ask me a lot whether I get FOMO if I regret not picking something up. I guess it kind of typically applies to limited edition stuff because otherwise you can just pick it up later, can't you? It's still there. It's not gone anywhere. But limited edition stuff, not so much. Although these days, limited edition really has ceased to have any meaning, hasn't it? But there are still some brands that actually do do limited edition stuff. Pat McGrath tend to do more limited edition releases. Charlotte Tilbury does some. Natasha Denona does some sometimes. I feel like there still are some limited edition releases. Max Christmas holiday collections are always limited edition and disappear forever once they're done. Lots of collabs, that type of thing. You get it. It's still out there. Limited edition, it still happens. So I'm going to be talking to you not just about limited edition, but about products, about releases that I skipped on, that I passed on, despite maybe everybody telling me I needed it or I should get it or am I getting it or it's amazing. It was really, really hyped up. And for one reason or another, I have my very smug face on because I have no regrets. So first up, the Natasha Denona Bronze Cheek Palette. This is that quad palette. I have her Love Glow Palette and I have the Tan Palette. Now, I think the Tan is probably my favourite. I love both of those quad products from Natasha Denona. I love both of them. I really wanted to love the bronze. When I saw it was coming out, I was excited. I planned to pick it up. Natasha Denona is one of those brands who the delay on the products arriving in the UK seems to be getting bigger and bigger all of the time. So it was released in the US weeks before I could get it here in the UK. So that gave me the benefit of pause. It, there was no point in me trying to rush and get it the second it came out here because the American market had way past saturated the review market of it. So there was no point in me worrying about review purposes. That opportunity was dead and gone. It was just about whether I personally wanted to pick it up or not. And by the time I'd watched five or six reviews, I didn't want it anymore. I love these quads. I wanted to love that one. It certainly is up my street in theory, but there's a few reasons why I'm glad I didn't pick it up. One, I've seen very few people really enjoy this palette. Even those who more liked it in their initial reviews, I've barely seen them touch it or use it since. You really can't see anybody using it still on YouTube. As far as I've seen and the people that I follow, I know most people were disappointed with it. The fact that it contains two creams and you know I'm not a cream girl. It's not my thing. I rarely reach for creams. In those quads, I tend to use all the powders and leave the cream sitting there because it's just not my preference. So the fact that half that palette is creams immediately makes it less worth it for me. I know those cream blush, the new formulas that she put in that palette weren't popular with most people. And then one of the powders was too dark for my personal taste as a cheek highlight. It was more for deeper skin, the super glow formula that's in there. It was just too gold for my skin tone. So I wouldn't have really been able to use that one as a highlight anyway. So really I would have been buying that palette for one shade and that fourth shade looks glorious and beautiful. It really makes no sense for me to buy a quad for the sake of the one pan in there that I might use fairly regularly. So I'm very happy and it was definitely the right decision for me not to spend my money on that one. Next up, Pat McGrath's Rose Decadence Palette. I know lots of people don't like the cardboard packaging, they'd rather have black, but I really like this one. I like the shades in here. It's definitely up my street as far as the color story. However, Having already purchased Divine Rose 1 and 2, this just really didn't add anything to my Pat McGrath collection, so that's why I decided not to pick it up. And now having seen her holiday collection, there's better options in there for me if I purchase that larger palette, which I'm not 100% sure whether I will or not yet. But again, it's just got a lot of these tones in the palettes I already own from her, and they might not be repeats exactly or dupes, but it definitely boxes off the sort of pink Pat McGrath rose options. I definitely don't need any more of those tones from Pat McGrath. I already have them in my collection from her and I'm super happy with what I've got. So for me, this was definitely one I didn't need to add as much as I would probably like it and get some use out of it. It wasn't a necessity to me. And from what I've seen, this formula in her cardboard packaging is not 
the same quality. Well, lots of people feel it's not as superior as her Lux bigger palette formula is. So that's another reason why I feel like I'm glad I skipped on that one. The Charty palette. Now, when this first came out, I had lots of people asking me if I was gonna get this begging me to get it, begging me to review it. It was another thing, it's not available here in the UK. We have to pay a lot more to ship it, to pay taxes, to get it here, all of that kind of stuff. And it would have taken far too long to get here, again, for there to be any worthwhile time me buying it for review purposes, because my God, there was a million reviews on that palette before it would ever have even arrived here in the UK. So it really wasn't worth my while picking it up for review purposes. And I just felt like it looks nice, I get, why people enjoyed it and why people wanted it so much and wanted to support Tati. But again, I just have no regrets. Once I just kind of decided, do you know what, I'm not picking that up. It's ridiculous to pay extra shipping and taxes for me for a palette that I have so many of those types of shades already in my collection. It just wasn't worth it for me personally. If you don't have a lot of eyeshadow, by all means, it was probably a great purchase. And I know loads of people who love that palette, been so happy with it, and it just ticks every box that they need it to tick. But for me, it just wouldn't have been worth it. And it being a larger palette as well, I just, I prefer a medium size. It just fits all nicely in my palette holders. I don't love a huge big palette. So therefore I just know I would have gone in a drawer and not got used. Next up, the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks. In fact, Jaclyn Hill cosmetics in general. I have yet to pick anything up from that brand. One reason being, again, like the Tarty Beauty, it's not available here in the UK as in you can't get it in a shop and it, you're gonna have to pay American shipping, international shipping and taxes, etc., to get it here. So that's one reason I didn't pick it up because I would have had to pay so much more for it. But then, <laughs> the drama that came out of those lipsticks. I'm just so relieved I had no involvement in that. Not that I would have been involved as in anyone would have cared what I had to say about it, but that's just that, uh, that whole situation was just such a mess. And I just, I felt so awful for everybody. I felt awful <laughs> because it was obviously mortifying and humiliating for Jacqueline. I, I understand it and it must have cost her a fortune I don't think that was a good situation for her. So I feel awful about that. Although I know, you know, it's her own responsibility, it's her brand, etc. I get that she's responsible for that. I still have sympathy for her and empathy for her. I also have a lot of sympathy and empathy for people like Raw Beauty Christie, for example, who was a huge fan supporter of Jacqueline and had to, you know, review that and had to be honest about what was happening because that must have been tough for Christie as well. It's probably the last thing she wanted to have to do. And I imagine she probably got trolled to death by Jacqueline Stans as well for doing that and exposing, you know, what was going on with these lipsticks. So I just... I, I really hate when I make a video and it turns out into being a really negative thing, but you've got to be honest. And that's what happens sometimes with makeup, especially a situation like that. I feel like one, I might not have even noticed, or I might have got, you know, the three that didn't have hairs in it or something, because I'd have been unlikely to buy the whole collection. I'd have probably picked a few shades and either there'd have been nothing wrong with mine and then everyone would have called me a liar, or there would have been something wrong with mine. But I just, <laughs> I just think, I would have, I never would have believed. I'd have thought it's me. I've somehow dropped it and forgotten or one of my kids has got hold of it and rubbed it on the dog. That's what I'd have thought had happened. I just don't know that I would have believed that's how they'd come and untrusted my, myself that something's not right here. So that I'm just really glad I stayed out that whole pickle, that whole mess, because that was a lot. Next up, the new Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. I think when this first came out, I just didn't realise they were going to reformulate it. I thought they were adding shades. That's what I thought they were doing. We've been begging for years. We need more shades of this good, good stuff. We want to share the love. More people want to buy it, want to use it. That's not what happened. It, they totally ruined it. I mean, I guess it's subjective because if you didn't like the original one, you probably like the new one more. I don't know. If you were maybe much fairer, maybe you like the new one more because it seems to be even lighter than the original one. And the majority of people who've tried both and used both do not appreciate the reformulation, put it that way. So I'm really glad I held off buying it because I really like the original. I'm not a huge cream bronzer user. I'm not 
it's not typically what I go for, but I do really love and appreciate that one when I do pull it out the bag. So I'm just glad that I stuck with my memory of that one and I didn't buy the new one excitedly thinking it was gonna be better, it was gonna be more inclusive, it was gonna be better for my skin tone because it actually would have been worse. So that's disappointing. Next up, the Natasha Denona Mini Bloom, another product that took a ridiculous amount of time to get here, which saved me some money. Because again, if it had been, if it launched here day one, the same day it launched in the US, I 100% would have purchased it. Because it didn't and it took months to get here, I had time to watch reviews. I watched people, I looked at swatches and it turns out it's an exact dupe of the NARS Orgasm X, which I already own. And I actually prefer the Orgasm X because it's just a little less shimmery and it's a bit richer. So it's almost the exact same blush, but I do prefer Orgasm X looking at side-by-side -side comparisons and swatches and reviews. So for that reason, I'm super glad I skipped the Natasha Denona Mini Bloom because I would have had two exactly the same, which nobody needs, although don't look at my lips to draw. Next up, the Tom Ford face palettes. Now these were a surprise because as long as these took to get here and it was literally months, Tom Ford is definitely another brand. There's a big gap between UK release date and US release date, it's months. And these face palettes took months to get here. When they first came out and I first saw them, I was like, oh, be still my beating heart. That's how I felt. And I thought, I'm gonna pick up at least two of these. They look glorious. I love the fact that I was gonna to get to try like contour shade, highlights and cheek and eye formulas from the brand because I think at that point I'd only tried foundations from the brand before, if I can remember. So I was really excited to try all the cheek products in one handy place. I love the packaging. You know me, I love a face palette, don't I? So I was very excited to try that one. I watched reviews, I looked at swatches, I knew I was which two I was gonna get. And then it just took so painfully, agonizingly long to get to the UK that I got bored of it. And this is the danger, this is what brands need to realize. When we're seeing products for literally months all over YouTube, all over Instagram, everyone's talking about it, everyone's using it for literally months and it's not available here I don't know about you I don't know if it's just me I go off of it I get bored I've moved on I get cross with it I'm fed up of seeing you shoved down my neck when I can't use you so I give up I move on you you're dead to me by the time it finally got here I was like I'm I'm uninterested now go away I've moved on with my life and you should do the same. So I have no regrets. It's way less exciting and interesting to me now it's finally here because it just took so long. I'm bored of hearing about it. So I definitely don't want to buy it anymore. So that's who's, who's laughing now, Tom Ford, who's laughing now. Next up, the Dyson Air Wrap. I don't know that I ever want to spend that amount of money on a hairdryer. I don't know that I do. I. I, I barely do anything to my hair. Literally my hair today, what happened is I put it in a high, in a bun yesterday, forgot it was in a bun, just went to sleep, took it out and, and I haven't even brushed it yet, if I'm being totally honest. That's the level of care I have for my hair. <laughs> That's the level of energy, the level of effort I have for my hair. Don't care. Just does it. I just let it live. It's the best life up there. I, I check in on it occasionally, but I let it do its thing. Unless I'm going on a big night out, which I might show it a brush, it's just there. That's what it does. It's just there. It's just my hair. It's just there living its best life. Oh, probably not living its best life. It's probably dying inside. But I don't really like spending any money on it. Shampoo, conditioner is about as much as I want to spend. Some Olaplex oil on the ends. That's about all it's getting, okay? That's all it deserves. To spend hundreds of pounds on a hair dryer is just wild to me. But I would do it if I thought it was going to give me glorious, tarty Westbrook hair. But having seen, I mean, tarty herself, the effort that goes into that thing. I've got arm ache just watching other people use it. My arm is hurting. I can just see myself having to hold my arm up to do the second half. I don't have the energy for it. I'm usually sore from the gym. So it's tough for me to do things like blow dry my hair because most of the time my muscles are so tired from training that I can barely, you know, lift a drink to my mouth some Friday nights. But I, I cope, don't worry, I manage. But 
that thing it just looks so heavy it looks like you've got to use it the specific way to get it to work lots of people then say that everything is undone within a couple of hours and it just it never really looked how I would want my hair to look anyway so yeah I definitely have zero regrets about not buying that thing the Fenty cream blush slash bronzers I was never that excited about them they look very emollient it's like my nightmare when it comes to cheap products. I just don't like those cream type of products. And I know so many people love them. I think if you love cream products, you're a cream girl, you will love them. They're some of the best out there from what I've seen and people who love creams and appreciate them will say. And I think there's a great range of colors. I've seen them look glorious on people. Cream is just not for me. And I know lots of people really want me to be a cream girl, but I'm just not. I just don't love them. It would have been a waste of money for me because I know they'd just be added to my drawer of non-used cream products. So what would be the point? And last but not least, something that really surprised me because I so planned to pick it up. And this is the Divinal Lip Shines. What are they called? And this is the Divinal Lip Shines from Pat McGrath. I fully planned to pick at least a couple of these up when they first came out and then I just didn't. And I don't really know why I didn't. I think it was because they launched earlier on her website than they did on Selfridges. It was a couple of weeks, I think maybe longer before they came to Selfridges. I just planned on waiting and getting that collection from Selfridges when it arrived because I didn't want to go through another stressful Pat McGrath website launch. So I thought, there's no hurry, I can wait for a lip balm. I'll wait till it comes to Selfridges and then I'll get them from there. By the time they came to Selfridges, I'd watched videos, reviews, lip swatches. Everybody loves them, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like the reviews put me off. I just felt like shade-wise, I wasn't seeing anything that I needed, really. I think the formula looks nice. I think they look lovely. I planned on picking up Electric Lotus, which was the bright orange shade. Um, I, I thought maybe I would like a nude. There doesn't really seem to be many nude options, and the one that there is is too light for me or for my preferences. So I just kind of felt like, do you know what? Actually, I've got a billion orange, coral, peach lipsticks. I've got a billion and one orange coral or peach balm type formulas. I definitely don't need another one of those. I wish there were some nude options, but there aren't for me. So I just thought, actually, I don't know why I still want them at this point. And I just realized that actually I didn't. So there was that. So there you have it. Those are some products that I decided not to buy for one reason or another and have never been happier about my choice. I'd love to know products that you either wish you picked up or that you decided not to and are really happy that you made that choice. It really worked out for the best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.